Yeah, I did. Anyway, go to 1 Corinthians 15. Well, <clears throat> we will be led of the Lord this morning. Amen? All right. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we are going to look at uh, kind of the middle part of this chapter. All right? 1 Corinthians 15. We looked at last week, uh, the, the first several verses, and I kind of I called it the, the fact of the resurrection, and that the resurrection did happen. It, it's it's interesting. You, know, you would you would assume that a church, uh, you know, Christians, there wouldn't be any doubt or any any reason to question. Um, that there'd be no uh, motive to question the authenticity of the resurrection. That that would just be a given, right? Uh, of course, we believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Of course, we know that uh, he, he's risen. Um, it, it's you know because that, that's a, a, a fundamental, amen. And that's what we're going to talk about here in just a little bit. But apparently, at the church in Corinth, and we know this was a very carnal church, right? And we're not going to you know rehearse all that this morning. But uh, if you read the, the book of First Second Corinthians much, uh, you have seen that they had a lot of problems. And apparently, one of the problems they had is that. There was some, maybe it was, you know, not members, maybe it was uh, some, you know, trying, working their way in, trying to sow discord, but they were causing doubt on the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ, all right? And so Paul devoted the whole last chapter of, of this letter to, uh, <clears throat> I'm saying the last chapter, the, the next last chapter, to the resurrection, all right? And we looked at the first several verses, and he states a lot of evidence for the resurrection. That's what we looked at last week. Uh, he talks about how there was uh, many who saw him. Uh, and in the, the first several verses, he talks about how that uh, what he did, uh, he died, he was buried, he rose again. It was all according to the scriptures. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Uh, even the Lord Jesus had you know, said to his disciples, I'm going to go to Jerusalem, I'll be handed over to the Gentiles, and then um, I'll be betrayed and put in the hand of the Gentiles. Uh, they will crucify me, and three days later, I'll rise again. And he, he told me exactly what was going to happen. And when it happened, they didn't believe it, you know? And, and uh, they didn't remember. He said he would rise again. But all that happened according to the Scriptures. And then uh, Paul began to verify uh, not only that it was done according to the Scriptures, but it was verified by witnesses. He said he was seen of Cephas, of, you know, the Apostle Peter. Uh, he was seen then of the... The, the other the, the rest of the apostles uh, obviously Judas was not included in that but the other 12 all right uh, that you know elected one to replace Judas and then he says uh, verse 10 uh, let's see verse 8 he says and last of all he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time and uh, we talked about that verse there uh, that phrase born out of due time it's almost like a that, that phrase means uh, an abortive uh, procedure he, he, he's saying and that he goes on to say he's the least of the apostles, and that um, by the grace of God he is what he is. He's saying I, I'm I'm the least one deserved <coughs> to be an apostle, and yet the Lord Jesus made a personal appearance to me. I saw him after his resurrection, and he called me out out of my sin, out of you know my my lifestyle uh, of persecuting the church, of persecuting him, and, and uh, then I was saved, and he called me into the ministry, and uh, he said I was a witness of his resurrection. And so it has been verified, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and he, even, he even says in, in these verses that at one time, the Lord Jesus was seen over 500 people at one time. Mm -hmm. and, and we talked about how, you know, if you were to take a, a court case and you bring 500 witnesses into a, a courtroom and the judge were to, you bring these 500 people before the, the, the judge and say, well, look, they all have the same testimony. This is exactly what they saw. They all saw it the same way, at the same time. Uh, the judge would think you're trying to pull something off. But that wasn't the case. This was this was factual. This was evident. This is a historic event. This is not a fairy tale. It's not something just you know made up. Uh, it's not just a um, you know a imaginary figure. Uh, Jesus, no, he literally physically rose from the dead, just like the scriptures say. Amen. And uh, you know we're of course two thousand years removed from that, and, and it's easy for us today to say, well, it probably didn't happen really that way. And, you know, uh, and, and uh, people who think they're smarter than the Bible uh, want to, you know, just kind of blow that off, whatever. But no, there, there's lots of evidence that Jesus did exactly what he said he was going to do. And it, it is hard for us to believe because it is not 
natural. Yes. Amen? Yes. It's not natural. It, it, is, it is easy to believe when you examine the evidence, but it's not so easy to believe when you consider how it was done. It was done by the power of God. Amen? And, and so I want us to go a little bit further though in the chapter, and we're going to kind of take some sections this morning, all right? Uh, we're not just going to go verse by verse. We're, you know, as we're going through the book uh, of 1 Corinthians, we will you know, eventually get here, and we'll just kind of take it verse by verse. But this morning, I want to hit some highlights, all right, about the resurrection. And I, I don't know if I've ever done this for an uh, Easter service or not. I normally preach uh, one of the accounts of Easter, okay, and I enjoy doing that. Uh, this morning, it'll be more of a topical message just about the resurrection, okay? But uh, nonetheless, it is the Word of God, amen? But let's go further down uh, into chapter 15, and let's look at verse... Uh, let, let's start with verse 13, okay? He says, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they which also are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Wow. If, if, if that's the end all, he says, what do we have to live for? If, if what these individuals in, in your church here at Corinth is saying that there is no resurrection, that, that that's just something that you know, uh, people have made up, that Jesus really didn't rise from the dead. Uh, it, it, it's, it's beyond our human understanding to comprehend how that could have been possible, then it, it, it just it didn't happen that way. Then he says, what kind of hope do you have? What, 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 you know, what is there to live for if there is no resurrection? Uh, let's go a further down, and let's look um, in verse towards the end of the chapter, all right? <clears throat> Let's look at verse 51. Okay? He's going to, in the middle section, he, he explains a lot, all right? And we're not going to go into all the great details, okay, right now, uh, today. But look at verse 51. <clears throat> he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. <clears throat> so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. <coughs> But in the strength of the sin of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain. <coughs> yeah, here he, he, he's addressing this this problem in the church that some are saying the resurrection is not true; that it really doesn't happen. And now he's going to begin, to, he's given the facts about it that we looked at last week, and now he's going to be, begin to explain why it is so important, okay? And we, we read those verses there in, in the middle, and uh, it, it's very important. It's crucial to our faith. Uh, it is a foundational, you know, some, uh, it's often called a fundamental of the faith, all right? The, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, and yet, it, interestingly enough, there's a lot of religious people that debate this. But they, they question it, and, and there's all kind of theories out there, you know, and such. Um, <clears throat> and I, I find it hard to understand how a Christian could, you know, consider those things. Um, but nonetheless, there are those religious people, uh, whether they're saved or not, they claim to be saved, that question the resurrection, all right? And yet, it is it is a fundamental of faith. That's what the, the middle, uh, those middle verses we're talking about. But the last verses we've just read shows the benefits of resurrection. Amen. And uh, that, that's really just focusing on one benefit of the resurrection, but uh, there's several benefits of it, amen? Uh, and we, we want to see why it is so important this morning. And obviously, if you're here today, and I don't know anybody's heart, but if you're not saved, uh, I hope you'll understand that you need the resurrection, amen? That you can be saved. 
uh, that Jesus didn't do this just for the world in general. He did this for you. Amen? For every individual to be saved. Uh, let, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll uh, get into our message, all right? Uh, Lord, we thank you for this day. <coughs> Lord, thank you for uh, everyone that's here today. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to share the word of God. And Lord, I pray that you would give me clarity of thought. <coughs> I pray that you would uh, guide my words and thoughts this morning. Lord, I pray that I would say only what you would have me said. Lord, I pray that you would uh, keep away distractions. Lord, we would focus upon what you would have us or to consider uh, today. That, Lord, um, you would uh, do a great work in hearts. Lord, if there's one here today who is not saved, Lord, I pray that you would, again, Lord, uh, keep those hindrances, Lord, from pulling their, their minds and their hearts away. Lord, keep our focus upon the, the, uh, Lord, uh, the, the message you have for us today. I pray that, Lord, you do a great work in our hearts. Lord, uh, I pray for those of us who are saved. Lord, may we be drawn closer to you. Uh, Lord, as children of God, Lord, we would uh, be encouraged, and Lord, uh, that the hope we have in you, Lord, that we would uh, rest in you, and Lord, that uh, we would uh, draw strength, Lord, for the power of your resurrection. Uh, may you get honor and glory for all that is said and done. Please, Lord, guide my words and thoughts now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I I'm going to share a, a video with you, all right? Now, um, <clears throat> uh, it's not very long, okay? Uh, but, you know, I, I just po kind of pose this question as our, our you know, uh, in the opening here. Uh, why is the resurrection important? Well, uh, it's obviously a fundamental, okay? But um, <clears throat> uh, it, 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 if you're saved, you know that it has life-changing power. Amen? Uh, hopefully you, you have seen it, it change your life. Uh, it's changed your eternal destiny, but it's also changed your life. Amen? And um, some of you are going to give a testimony. Now, I didn't give you permission uh, for you, I, I, I didn't ask your permission to give your testimony, but you're going to give a testimony in this video, all right? So um, if, if you uh, end up being on video, um, uh, don't come, you know, asking for copyright, you know, uh, <laughs> rights or anything on me, okay? All right? Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I just thought I'd share some of the, the power of the resurrection, amen, that we've seen in our church and how God is working in the lives of our church family, all right? Genesis 3, 3, 2. child would be born. He came from humble beginnings. A manger, a quiet time of poverty. But his purpose was greater than any man, and the world would never be the same. History would forever be changed. He is the Son of God, and He possessed the power of heaven. He came to arise.
Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he shall also quicken you. This is the power to arise. Will you join with these as well? Will you decide as they have chosen? We will arise. In, in 1 Corinthians 15, let's go back to these first verses that we read uh, in, in kind of the middle part of the chapter, uh, verse uh, 13, and uh, let's see here, look down in verse um, uh, 14, he says, and if Christ not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So the, the, the first thing here he, he mentions is our preaching vain, all right? And um, turn over to 1 Corinthians 6, I believe it is, okay? I'm going to go by my memory a little bit this morning. I will preach short, all right? <laughs> it might sabotage me. <laughs> you know, Brian's been sitting in service this morning. <laughs> going to uh, hey. have my questions. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, is it 1 Corinthians 6? It's not going to be 6. six. It's, uh, it's not going to be there. Uh <clears throat> Real quick, it might be Second Corinthians. Yes, look at Second Corinthians six. Okay. I believe this might be it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, look at verse four. All right. Here, Paul is talking about some of the things he's gone through. Okay. Uh, since that in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. Uh, look down at verse 9. As unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, yet possessing all things. Here, he's going through some of the things that they have endured uh, you know, in the ministry. Uh, the Apostle Paul and those who traveled with him. And yet, back over in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, he says, If there is no resurrection, if Christ has not really risen from the dead, if that's just something we've made up, then it's all in vain. He said the stonings, the beatings, the, the, the imprisonments, uh, the, all, all the, the riots that you know, they brought us out of town after town. He says all for nothing if the resurrection is just a lie. He said, I, I, I've left everything. I've left my, my customs, my family, uh, my, my nation, you know, the nation of Israel. I, I have left my, um, my training as a Pharisee and, and you know, the, the, the well-paid job I had. All of that just to travel and be beaten and left for dead for a lie. If the resurrection is not true. He said, oh, my preaching is vain. But not only what was his preaching vain, he says, your faith is also vain. Wow. He said, it, 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 it's all uh, for, for nothing. It, it, it's, you know, um, look, look down there, um, verse 19. 
Uh, and uh, he says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Wow. You know, I think back to um, the book of Ecclesiastes, if we won't turn it for time's sake this morning, but I believe it was in Ecclesiastes 6, you know, Solomon, he says, all was vanity. He actually said this several times through, through the book, but uh, I believe there's a specific place there, a specific verse in Ecclesiastes 6. He talks about how it's all vanity. And, you know, we all return to the dust, and no man knoweth. The, 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 the dead know not what happens to them. You know, that, that, that there was very few uh, individuals ever resurrected in, in the Old Testament. Uh, you saw Elijah uh, uh, raise a person from the dead. There may have been one other individual. I, I think, again, up off my head. But very few individuals, you know, came back from the dead in the Old Testament. That was a, a foreign thing in the Old Testament. And when you died, we, it was total fate. I mean, you... you it, you trusted, you know, in God that He was going to take care of you, but you really did not know. And, and it wasn't until we come to the New Testament that the mystery of the resurrection became a, a, a truth that we could more fully understand. And, and now we understand this great truth, Amen. But in, in that day, hey, once you're dead, it was it was a, a great mystery as to what happened, where you went, what happened next, you know. Uh, that I believe that God would one day raise you, you know, raise you up, but where you are and what you're doing in that you know that present state, then after you've died, who knows? It's all vanity. But praise God, we have the full truth now. Amen. We know that hey, there is life beyond the grave. That, hey, Christ is coming back for us one day. Amen. It's not all in vain. Uh, look at verse 15 here. He says, "Yea, and we are found." Uh, false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up, if so be that the dead lies not. Brother Jerry just gave us a, a really great Sunday school lesson this morning on God keeps His promises, <laughs> that the name of God, uh, and, and, you know, His word is above His name, that He keeps, He honors His promises, He keeps His covenant. Amen. And here Paul he says, you know, you're saying. That there is no resurrection, that the resurrection is, is false, that Christ uh, could not have risen from the dead, since you can't understand it, you don't believe it, and if that's true, then God did not keep his promise. Because he promised his son would not see, his Holy One would not see corruption. He promised that his son would rise again on the third day. Yes. So if there is no resurrection, then God is a liar. We see that the resurrection is a fundamental of our faith. Amen. It is vitally important. Not only that, but uh, look here. He says, uh, verse 16, uh, If the dead rise not, then is Christ not raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Wow. So turn over to, uh, I'll hold your place here, but go to Romans. Okay, Romans chapter 4. We're considering what, what are some of the, you know, uh, the benefits, if you will, that, that why is the resurrection so important? Why do we celebrate this day? Amen. Uh, even the lost world acknowledges that, hey, there's something significant that happened on this day. Amen. Yes. Uh, or, you know, we, we don't want to a specific day, all right? But this period of, this time of the year, there was something significant that happened. Amen. And, of course, we know it was the greatest event of all human history. Amen. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans 4, uh, verse 24, okay? <clears throat> it says, But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, he, he's speaking of righteousness by faith, okay? Uh, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus Christ, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Wow. So Paul says, back there in 1 Corinthians 15, if Christ is not raised, you said there is no resurrection. So if Christ is still in, in the grave, his body was stolen and his body is gone. He, he didn't really raise from the dead. Then that means we are still guilty before God. There, there is no justification. We, we still stand in judgment before God in our sinful state. How, how, how awful, how dreadful it is to consider that. That's where we would be. What a, what a 
where we'll stay. Place to be in. Amen. If we understand that before we get saved, that, that's where we are. All we like to have gone astray. There's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, we're all sinners condemned. Amen. The way to the sin is death. The Romans 5 1. Amen. <laughs> Keep reading. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's because of what He's done for us. Amen. Because He shed His blood, because He died, because He met the payment, He met the conditions. And how do we know that the conditions were met and satisfied? Because God gave Him the receipt. <laughs> with yes. the resurrection. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Amen. I don't know who told me that first. I heard that year and I was, I was young. Amen. But the, the cross is the payment for sin. The, the, it is the, the payment for sin's penalty. The, the resurrection is the receipt of the purchase made. Amen. He purchased my redemption. Amen. It is proof that it is paid for at the cross. Amen. Hey, because he rose from the dead, just like he said, Everything he said was true. Everything he said he would do, he did. And everything he said he will do, he will do. He will finish what he has started. And he is coming back. Amen. Hey, the resurrection is the fundamental truth of everything we hold dear. Amen. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15. Not only is it vital for our faith, it's, it's vital for uh, <clears throat> for. Uh, the, the, the preaching uh, of the faith it is vital for the forgiveness of our sins. All right, but let, let's uh, look on down. Then it is vital for our hope. But let, let's go to this next section that we looked at here uh, towards the end of the, the chapter, uh, First Corinthians fifteen and verse fifty-one. Here uh, again, we mentioned a while ago how that. You know, in the Old Testament, they didn't, they didn't have this. They didn't have this information yet. God had chosen to, to delay, you know, sharing this with the world, all right? And, and so here, the Apostle Paul, being led of God, is sharing this, uh, and, and God's given it to us, amen, in, in the Word. He says, I show you a mystery, something not revealed before, all right? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. You know, in, in the Bible, the Lord has a, a lovely way of referring to the death of his saints. And he calls it being a saint. Amen. And, uh, he, and that's what this is referring to. Uh, we shall not all sleep. Uh, and here he's speaking of the rapture. All right? Uh, and he says, verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You know, that there are some of us that will cheat death. We'll be like Enoch. We'll be walking with God. And then God will say, I, I, I heard one preacher say this years ago. It's like he and the Lord were out walking. And the Lord just said, you know what? It's closer to my house than yours. You want to come on with me? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you come on to my house? We're, 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 halfway, you know, we're closer to my house than your house. I really think Enoch had that kind of fellowship with God. He walked with one day he was not. So God took him home. Uh, you know, one day Jesus is going to come back and say, you know what? Let's just go to my house. And in a twinkling of an eye, it could be today. Amen. It could happen in a moment. And we shall all be changed. Wow. Amen. Now, those of us, th 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 those, you know, from among us who they're asleep right now, their they're, they're souls asleep, so to speak. They're, I say their souls, that's probably not a good way to say that either. But that they, they've departed this life in a physical, in a physical sense. But then they shall be raised incorruptible. They shall receive a new body. Amen. We shall all be changed. Well, let's turn over to another passage here. Go to First John, okay? First John, uh, chapter three. Paul is kind of summarizing end time events right there in First Corinthians fifteen. All right. Um, that there's several resurrection, resurrections that will, that will take place uh, in the end times. We're not going to take time to look at all of them this morning, all right? But uh, the, the rapture is the next thing on, on God's calendar. When he will call us out. First uh, John 3. And it, uh, let's just look at verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. 
Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. So here we, we are called the sons of God. Wow, what, what a privilege that is. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> we who were sinners, who were the enemies of God, now we are joint heirs with Christ. We are the sons of God. Wow, we've been made a part of the family of God. Amen. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. So not we will be one day. It's not something that's going to happen in the future. We have that title right now. We own it right now. We have the full benefits of being a joint heir with Christ. Amen. And he, and he says, It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, when he returns for us, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Wow. What a promise. Amen. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. The, the dead in Christ shall rise up first, and then we which remain shall be caught together with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to that day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, look at verse 3. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Uh, <clears throat> there, there was a, a plaque that my grandparents used to have, and they had two or three copies of it throughout their house. They had a big farmhouse. And they had one in the kitchen, one upstairs, and one or two other places. And it just said, I don't want to be, I don't want to say anything today I wouldn't want to be saying when Jesus comes back. I don't want to be looking at something I wouldn't want to look at when Jesus comes back. I don't want to be doing something. I don't want to be going somewhere that I wouldn't want to be doing or going when Jesus comes back today. Because Jesus may come back. And just several, several, you know, statements like that that would go through it, and they said because he may come back today, you know, that's that's no true. Amen. He could come back today, any moment. Amen. And we need to be preparing. We need to be every man that had this hope purifies himself. We need to be getting ready for that moment. Amen. We need to be hey looking and being ready for his coming. Amen. Turn over to another passage. Uh, and this is uh, probably a familiar passage to, to many of you. Um, go to First uh, Thessalonians. Okay. First Thessalonians chapter four. Kind of uh, alluded to this already, but let's, we'll go ahead and read this one. Uh, First Thessalonians four, verse fifteen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these Words. You know, the, the, the world, the, the, they, they look at the end times, that they, they look at the world going mad, they look at China uh, going after Taiwan, they look at Russia and the Ukraine, they look at the oil crisis, they look at the economy, they look at the, you know, all the markets and the housing crisis and everything going on, they look at the government and, well, don't look at the government, you know, yeah. but they, they, look at, <laughs> they look at everything going on and they, they start to sweat, they start to panic, they get worried. You know, I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried because I know what's next on God's plan. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what the election's going to do. I don't know what Russia's going to do. But I know what God's going to do. He's coming back for me. Amen. That's mm -hmm. the next thing He's got on His agenda. Amen. It's me. He's coming back for me. <laughs> Praise God. That's a comfort to me. Amen. And how do I have that hope? Why do I have that hope? Why do I have that confidence, that assurance? Because if He rose from the dead, one day He's coming back for me too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Boy, that, that, that gives us a hope, a confidence. In fact, Titus calls it our blessed hope. Paul, right to Titus, calls it our blessed hope. Amen. We don't have to fret. We don't have to worry about what this, this world throws at us. We don't have to worry about all those problems. Hey, the Lord, he's given us a promise of a resurrection. Amen. One day. Let, let's go back to 1 Corinthians and we'll, we'll finish up here. Uh, <clears throat> look at uh, the, the next several verses here. Verse 54, he says, So when this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass that saying, that is the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 
The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Amen. Uh, how, do, how can we know? How can we have that confidence? It's because of Jesus Christ, because of his resurrection. And here he's, he's picturing death. As a person, and, you know, giving it a uh, you know kind of a, an imaginary body here, and he's saying one day death itself will die. Well, I uh, I've been enjoying that thought this this week. The thing about the resurrection, death has died. Amen. Death has no power, has no grip on the child of God. It's simply a a stepping stone from this life to the next. Amen. Death has no power uh, of fear, and, and, and no, uh, you know, <clears throat> the, the sting is gone. Amen. Wow. So turn back over to uh, Romans chapter 5, okay? Uh, I said we, we close there. Let's go back to Romans 5 one more time, all right? Can't blame me too much, I'll have my notes, okay? <laughs> Romans 5. Uh, <clears throat> look, look down towards the end. Uh, uh, of the chapter here. Uh, <clears throat> look at uh, kind of the, the, middle, the middle part here. It says, verse 13, For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. So here he's making the comparison. He says, just as, as with one man, with Adam, uh, all men were condemned to sin and, and uh, uh, by sin to death. And so all the judgment passed upon all men. All men have sinned, and so all men are guilty of death. And so in the same sense, as, as just as the, the penalty has been dealt, to, to mankind, so then they gift by grace through one man, Jesus Christ. Look down, uh, <clears throat> verse 18 then, he says, uh, verse 17, For by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men under justification of life. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous. Wow. Verse 21. That is, thy sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow. You know, I remember, and I, I, I've not been... I, I've not been there uh, every time, and it, it's just the way that things work out. But I remember a few years ago being at the bedside when Sister Mavis stepped across into eternity. It was the sweetest passing. There was no struggle, just peace. Just leaving here to go there. Death had no power, it had no grip. She was done fighting. The battle of cancer was all over. And she was leaving the pain, the sorrow, the heartache for several decades that she had lived this life, entering into a wonderful peace with her Lord for eternity. How is that possible? How is that possible? Death has a, a grip on mankind. No one can escape its power. It is you know, the one thing that's certain is what? Death and taxes. <laughs> Not certain for me. Because death has no power in it. Amen. You can receive the gift of grace, this abundant gift of grace, and reign unto life through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In fact, you have that gift, amen, if you have received Jesus Christ, if, if you made him your Savior, amen. Wow. What, what, what a wonderful truth. What a wonderful blessing the resurrection is, amen, the power of the resurrection but let's go back to the first Corinthians and look at one more thing here, okay? There's one more verse in the chapter we'll, we'll finish out with. Verse 58 of chapter 15. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor 
is not in vain in the Lord. We started looking back there at that uh, the verse there where Paul he said in um, verse 13, uh, verse 14, he says, if Christ not risen, our preaching is our preaching vain. It's empty. It's worthless. And then he begins to describe the resurrection. He says, but I'm here to tell you, it's not a lie. It's not fabricated. It's not made up. It's the genuine thing. It really happened in your life, your labor, your effort, the stonings, the mockery, the ridicule, everything. It's not in vain. Because he lives. And he's coming back. <laughs> Amen. He's coming back. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Hey, let, let, let's keep our focus on Him. Amen. Mm-hmm. Let, let's not be focused on the world and all their problems. Let's not be focused upon you know uh, on ourselves and oh, I've got to do this. Oh, I've got, oh man, how are we going to face this? I can do all things through Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen. And I want to do all things. Amen, because he's coming back for me. He loves me, and one day he's coming back for me. Amen. You say, Pastor, I, I just, I don't understand all this. I'm not sure how that, it doesn't work for me like that. I'll tell you, if you're a Christian, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to do anybody's feelings, okay? But if you're a child of God, the resurrection will excite you. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, there's something wrong. I'll make you I'll make you feel a little bit better inside. Amen. <laughs> if you're from North Carolina, I'll make you want to shout. <laughs> I won't go that far, okay? I'm the one I'm the only Tar Hill in here. Well, yeah. Lewis is in here. All right. <laughs> but I'll make you feel a little warm inside, okay? The resurrection is our blessed hope. Maybe. It's the power to live a godly, righteous life. Amen. If you do not know that power. If you don't know that victory over sin, if you don't know the joy and the peace of knowing Jesus Christ your Savior, you can today. Amen. As many received it, then give you power, the power to become the sons of God, even though you believe on his name. How, 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 do, you, how do you receive that power? That thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe thine heart that he rose from the dead. Amen. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Romans 10. For whosoever shall call on him, the Lord shall be saved. Amen. It's that simple. You just gotta ask him. Amen. So, oh, what a wonderful free gift it is. Amen. The power of the resurrection. We're closing with.